When we find a KRAS mutation on a patient's molecular report after testing of their lung cancer, it's important to underscore the fact that KRAS mutations are really a heterogeneous group of different mutation types, meaning there are different amino acid changes that involve different residues along the KRAS protein. And so, for example, in smokers, the KRAS G12C mutation is the most common mutation versus in non-smokers, you see other mutations such as the KRAS G12D mutation that are much more common. And beyond that, um, it can involve other amino acids such as um, the amino acid 13 of the KRAS protein. The difference is that we now have drugs for particular mutations or substitutions such as KRAS G12C versus the other mutation types where we might employ different strategies altogether. And so the specific mutation that's identified in a patient's cancer may dictate the likelihood of us having a, a more exciting clinical trial for a patient uh, versus just more standard options for these patients on a targeted therapy front. How do I counsel pa patients when KRAS is found? Uh, I think, uh, you know, the discussion we typically have is, uh, you know, previously it was thought to potentially be a poor prognostic feature, uh, but with the evolution of immunotherapy and also now these direct KRAS inhibitors, uh, it's really unclear if that's true anymore. Uh, in terms of upfront treatment outside of a clinical trial, uh, the KRAS mutation, I explained to patients, it's the most common mutation we encounter in their type of lung cancer. Uh, and, uh, and that still immunotherapy can be effective. So for example, unlike um, uh, EGFR or ALK non-small cell lung cancer, KRAS lung cancers, especially the ones associated with smoking such as G12C, patients can still derive good benefit to immunotherapy where for example, EGFR and ALK, there's really limited demonstration of effectiveness of, of immunotherapy such as pembrolizumab and atezolizumab, um, especially as single agents. Um, so I counsel them, you know, that they can still respond to immunotherapy, chemoimmunotherapy stratified by what their PD-L1 status is. For, um, for example, PD-L1 high, whether to give pembrolizumab or, or chemotherapy with pembrolizumab. Um, and, and I also counsel them that we may have clinical trials for them. So if they have KRAS G12C, the direct inhibitor trials. Uh, that are very exciting, that are in development. And uh, we also have trials targeting certain commutations of KRAS. So, uh, you know, I, I really emphasize that we have uh, potentially um, uh, excellent treatments for them, whether they be immunotherapy, chemoimmunotherapy, direct, direct RAS inhibitors, or clinical trials uh, with combination therapies.